to the teacher who was regularly intoxicated during class this year. Hello everyone, my name is Alex and I am a part of the high school class of 2020. If you generally keep up with the news, you might see that every year or every second year there's a high school graduation speaker in a random school, random county, that goes viral for using their graduation speech as a platform to talk poorly uh, and really bash the school that they're graduating from. There's one instance that has gone particularly viral. Uh, this video has amassed over 4 million views, and it's the case of Natalie Burr, who was the valedictorian of San Ysidro High School in San Diego, California. So this video posted on Now This News has around 130,000 likes and only 3,000 dislikes, which makes the like to dislike ratio around 98%. People loved this video. To my counselor, thanks for teaching me to fend for myself. You were always unavailable to my parents and I, despite appointments. And might I note, you expressed to me your joy in knowing that one of your students was valedictorian when you had absolutely no role in my achievements. To the staff in the main office, thank you for teaching me how to be resourceful. Your negligence to inform me of several scholarships until the day before they were due, potentially caused me to miss out on thousands of dollars. To the teacher who was regularly intoxicated during class this year. Thank you for using yourself as an example to teach students about the dangers of alcoholism. Being escorted by police out of school left a lasting impression. I hope that future students and staff learn from these examples. Thank you, class of 2019. The total length of the speech was around three minutes. It was relatively short, and she actually starts the speech. I have it in front of me here, the transcript at least. She says, good evening, it's a pleasure to speak here today. Uh, and then the entire premise of the speech is that she wants to give recognition to those who have greatly influenced her over the last four years. So first she thanks her mother and father and then she goes on to list five teachers in specific that uh, I assume she personally made a connection with during her high school years. Then she thanks her friends and tells them I appreciate your love and support always and will treasure the memories we've made at this school. And then the rest of the speech is where the bashing begins. This is where she, in front of the entire school, with the staff sitting right behind her, goes after three targets in specific. One, her counselor. Two, the staff in the main office. And three, of course, the famous part is the teacher that was regularly intoxicated, supposedly, during class this year. So first, I want to address the teacher that she claims was regularly intoxicated during class. Now, I will admit, when I first saw this story back in 2019, when the video was first released, I was shocked. I couldn't believe that a school administration would allow a teacher to come and lecture students, a teacher that was drunk or hungover or whatever, I, I was shocked. Of course, that would be totally, totally inappropriate and that teacher should be fired immediately. I, along with everyone who watched this video apparently, instantly assumed that there's no way that such a heavy accusation would be fabricated or largely based on rumors. In her speech, Natalie Burr says this. Being escorted by police out of school left a lasting impression. Being escorted by the police, she says. So Natalie Burr is claiming that there is a teacher in the school that was pulled out by police as a result of some intoxication or alcohol and was not fired. So seemingly there are two possibilities. Either the school administration did not fire and kept this teacher who was pulled out by police during school, or something else regarding this teacher happened and rumors started spreading and all of a sudden there is a group consensus among the student's body that this teacher was taken out for being intoxicated. Which one of these two do you think is more likely? Well, as it turns out, according to the district's legal team, there were never any police involved. 
ever. This teacher was instead experiencing medical issues that affected performance and behavior, and had to be taken out to see her medical professionals. So this teacher was experiencing a medical emergency of some sort, apparently, and the students in her class, or students that were passing in the halls who happened to see this teacher, immediately assumed, as high school students would, that, oh, this is the drunk teacher and this teacher's being taken out because once again they were drinking too much. Again, there's an argument to be made that if this teacher was regularly behaving strangely because of this medical condition, maybe this teacher shouldn't be teaching in the first place, but to blast this person in front of the entire school on unfounded accusations that this individual is an alcoholic I mean, I'm just imagining being that person who... Anyway, going backwards, she then targets the staff in the main office who, she said, neglected to inform her about several scholarships until a day before they were due. I mean, from what I know, there don't exist any scholarships that exist exclusively to staff in main offices. If you're proactive and you seek out such scholarship opportunities, and especially if you're in a financial problem, as the valedictorian, I mean, there will be opportunities available if you really do apply yourself to looking. I would expect that you would. I personally, and I assume future employers, find this mentality of blame shifting really offsetting. She then continues to say that they repeatedly turned her away when she was applying for a work permit, but then immediately after she says, I've had to escalate issues with staff to the assistant principal various times to reach any sort of solution. Well. Did you not reach a solution? She said she had to go to the vice principal to reach any sort of solution, but I think that implies that there was a solution. I mean, of course people aren't perfect at doing their jobs, but for such a small problem that evidently was solved already, why did you bring it up in your list of grievances in front of the entire school? I don't get that. Moving on, Natalie Burr started her conquest of exposure with her guidance counselor. And this one was particularly disgusting to me. So I did a bit of digging into this one, and I found that Natalie Burr's counselor's name is Vanessa Rico, and she is one of six counselors in San Ysidro High School. And assuming an equal distribution, out of a school with 2,500 kids, Vanessa Rico was responsible for around a little over 400 students. Public schools generally do struggle a lot with having enough counselors for their students, and as a result, they, they can't necessarily provide such one-on-one -on -one care that students may expect. So in her class of 2019 graduation speech, Natalie Burr went after her counselor for not being involved enough to her standards. Well, just a few months back, on July 8th, 2018, Vanessa Rico's daughter was killed in a hit-and-run situation. I assume that this news was well known in the community. In fact, Natalie Burr herself uh, in a statement said, quote, I understand that those I criticized may be facing personal issues. There is a GoFundMe page for Vanessa Rico's daughter, so um, if you want to go donate, if you have any spare, spare money, I definitely recommend doing so. I found a quote that was and particularly devastating from Vanessa Rico in court uh, when she said, uh, and I'll read it word for word, she said, in every student I meet, I see her, her, her daughter, implying. Uh, and then she said, it reminds me of my dreams and my child will never fulfill. In her speech, Natalie Burr proclaimed that her counselor, I assume in a lighthearted and joyful spirit said, I'm glad that one of my students is a valedictorian. Natalie Burr took this statement and said, thanks, but you had no role in my achievements. You expressed to me your joy in knowing that one of your students was valedictorian when you had absolutely no role in my achievements. So she put her counselor on blast in front of the entire school. I mean, this to me is vicious. And then this behavior was celebrated, 98% like to dislike ratio. People cheered her for this. 
Natalie Burr later released a statement saying, quote, In the beginning, I recognized and thanked those who I believe went above and beyond for the students. I put a transcript of the speech in wordcounter.com. There are 346 words, 42% of which were dedicated towards genuine thanks for her friends, parents, and selective teachers. On a day of celebration, if you think that's a fair representation of the high school staff's performance, 58% negative? I mean, that's up to you. And then she went on to say, I understand that those I criticize may be facing personal issues, but I don't think that should affect their commitments or the school's responsibility to fulfill those commitments. Yes, I, I agree. <laughs> but was laying those accusations in front of the entire school, some of which were blatantly false and based on rumors, is, is that your solution? And then she went on to say, I didn't expect for change to come from my speech. So what was the purpose then? What, what, why did you give that speech? From blaming the main office for not alerting her of scholarships, to interpreting her counselor's joyful remarks as claims to her success, I see nothing but reckless entitlement. While those who are entitled and those who jump to self-victimization do struggle in the workforce, they thrive in the public sphere. 98%. The public loves satisfaction, and in this case, the public loved satisfaction so much as to overlook all nuance and jump to self-indulging in the preconceived notion that this graduation speaker, Natalie Burr, indeed pulled off the perfect expose moment. In real life, this overdramatic and unwarranted self-victimization creates only unnecessary division. These types of videos only breed further entitlement, especially in youth. This exposed culture sucks, and it especially sucks for those whom it targets. When the next rogue graduation speaker comes along, I, I really do encourage you to think critically and uh, investigate the situation before pressing the like button. Thanks for watching.